An Israeli airstrike in central Syria has killed one Syrian soldier and three pro-Iranian fighters, according to a UK-based war monitor. The Syrian state news agency Sana had earlier quoted a military source as saying that attack near the city of Palmyra in Homs province had killed a soldier and wounded three others. Israel reserves the right to act against Iran, Israeli Foreign Minister Yair Lapid has said, suggesting that force may be necessary to stop the Iranian nuclear program. Speaking at a joint news conference in Washington, D.C., with its Emirati and U.S. counterparts, Lapid said the civilized world should make it clear that Iran will not be allowed to acquire a nuclear weapon. A 37-year-old Danish citizen is suspected of killing five people in a bow and arrow attack in the Norwegian town of Kongsberg in a rare incident of mass killing in Norway, police said on Thursday. Two people, including an off-duty police officer, were wounded in the Wednesday evening attacks, which took place in different locations in the town, 68 kilometers southwest of the capital, Oslo. Indian man who used a cobra and a viper to murder his wife has been handed a double life sentence in what prosecutors have called the rarest of rare cases. Surai Kumar, 28, set loose a highly venomous Russell's viper snake on his wife Uthra that left her in hospital for almost two months, prosecutors in the southern Kerala state said. A fire in a residential building in the southern Taiwanese city of Kaohsiung has killed 46 people and injured another 41, the government said on Thursday. The fire broke out in the 40-year-old building in Kaohsiung's Yancheng district in the early hours of the morning and was extinguished around dawn. Shifting winds posed new challenges for firefighters battling a blaze in Southern California coastal mountains that threatened ranches and rural homes and kept a major highway shut down for days. While the scenic region along the Pacific shoreline is lightly populated, the blaze was a threat to more than 100 homes, ranches and other buildings, fire officials said. The United States has overtaken China to account for the largest share of the world's Bitcoin mining, data published on Wednesday by Britain's Cambridge Center for Alternative Finance showed. Pakistani Federal Finance Minister Shrokat Tarin said on Thursday that the government has no plan to hike the power tariff immediately. In his interaction with American think tank, U.S. Institute of Peace in Washington, the finance minister said that before increasing the electricity tariff, the government will take measures to contain inflation in the country. PPP co-chairperson and former Pakistan President Asif Ali Zardari claimed on Thursday that his party will form the next government in the country. Responding to a question about the duration of the accountability process, Zardari said, the process will continue till the country's economy does not come down further. Amid strong resistance by his guards and protests by PPP supporters in Karachi, a team of the National Accountability Bureau failed to arrest Sindh Assembly Speaker Aga Sarajarani and returned after staying outside his residence for 15 hours, it emerged on Thursday morning. Durrani is wanted by an AB for allegedly owning assets beyond known sources of income. A 16-page written verdict authored by Justice Iqbal Kalhor was issued on Wednesday. Pakistan lost 28 people to the coronavirus in the last 24 hours. According NCOC, at least 10 16 fresh coronavirus cases were detected. The positivity rate was recorded 2.11%. Dengue prevention activities have been intensified across Punjab under the direction of Punjab Secretary Primary and Secondary Health Care, Imran Sikandar Balok. In a statement, the secretary said the health department continues operations across the province to eradicate dengue larvae and their breeding. Friday is the last day for filing of income tax returns for the fiscal year 2021 in Pakistan. The Federal Board of Revenue has once again made it clear that there will be no further extension in deadline. 
Uzbekistan International Airlines has fired more than 1,500 employees on submission of fake documents, while the airline has also made the process of its human resources easier and better by including the EPIA workers portal. This was revealed during a meeting of the Senate Standing Committee on Aviation chaired by Senator Hidayatullah, 